audit CPA exam one, audit assertions and sampling. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep, and our LinkedIn group. And so what I'd like to start with is a series of questions that I recently went over with a student on the auditing section of the exam. First question, auditors who pr prefer statistical sampling to non-statistical sampling may do so because st statistical sampling, that's a mouthful, helps the auditor. So what's the purpose here? Well, the purpose of statistical sampling is we want to use math to be able to test a sample and use that sample to justify that we've looked at a larger percentage of the total population. So we're going to use math to try to sample as large a population as we can. So the answer that I selected is measure the sufficiency, which is the amount, of evidential matter obtained. How much are we measuring? Because the more that we, the larger percentage is better. The, a larger percentage of the total population means we can be more confident that our sample reflects the total population. Which of the following best describes the distinguishing feature of statistical sampling? So now we go a little deeper. The answer, which is in black here, it says it provides a mean for measuring mathematically the degree of uncertainty that results from examining, examining only a part of the population. So I say it another way. If we sample X number of items, the math involved in statistical sampling says we can be X percent. I'm going to make up a number and say 90 percent sure that we've captured a certain percentage of the population. So in my example, we can be 90 percent sure that we've captured 85 percent of the population. And we call that how, pers how sure we are, the confidence level. And we use math to figure that out. The next question is different. It refers to more of a procedure and what the procedure in an audit is testing. So it says we have sales transactions in a sales journal. And we trace those sales to customer orders when a customer raises their hand and says, we want to order something, and to the shipping documents, which is, did the product actually go out the door or not? And what assertion are we testing? And we're going to see later on in the video assertions. Now, in order to help the student, I basically define the three incorrect answers and the correct one. Cutoff means... Did we post the transaction in the correct month or year? And we commonly see that with payroll as an example, making sure the payroll gets in the right period even though the cash may be paid after year end. Authorization was the transaction approved, for example, check signing. Completeness. Did we include every transaction? For example, payables at, all, at year end are all the payables there. And in this case, the reason that we do these procedures is because of the occurrence assertion. Did the sale really occur? Or, if not, was the sales journal simply wrong? We're testing for occurrence. I'm going to skip that one because it's a little unrelated. And I do want to go down to the types of assertions. And these are most of them. Valuation. How much should we record? Allocation, where do we record it? Completeness, did we include everything? Existence or occurrence, and it, here I said, you know, we don't have a sale unless the customer has an ability to pay. And in some cases that may mean uh, extending the customer credit if we're going to have a receivable. So existence and occurrence is a uh, the assertion that we saw in the earlier question, and then rights and obligations. So do we have title over something would be a right. If we have a, something listed as a fixed asset, do we have the title, which means that we really own it. Obligation, if we have a, if we have a note payable, are we obligated to pay it back? We can look at the detail on the note payable document.
it says on the next question, the occurrence assertion for accounts payable bills we owe includes, and we're given these answer choices, and what I added on for the student was, did we buy something and do we owe somebody money? And that's what we're really talking about with payables. Did we buy something and do we owe someone money for it? That's the question. So, let's see what we got. The correct answer for this assertion is determining whether all accounts payable are actually liabilities. Do we really owe somebody something? And then I added on here um, some other things that were incorrect, but that were in the answer choices. Unrecorded liabilities. Every audit I've ever I ever worked on had a test for unrecorded liabilities. And that has to do with cutoff, as I mentioned a few minutes ago. Was the transaction recorded in the proper year? So the question, the CPA question, is. Unrecorded liability, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it a little more easily. Unrecorded liabilities, and I put in parentheses what that means, are most likely to be found during a review of which of the following documents. And it's going to be unpaid bills because the procedure is we're going to review the bills paid right after year end to see whether any of those bills applied to before your end, and if they did, are they recorded as a liability? That's how we test for an unrecorded liability. Next question. An important primary purpose of the auditor's review of the client's procurement system, that means going out and buying things, should be to determine the effectiveness of the activities to protect against. So what are we protecting against? What are we concerned about? And so the example I used for the student was someone in the company creates a purchase order for a product or service for personal use. This is a common thing that, particularly in a situation where people working for the plumbing company or the electrician do plumbing or electric work for the company and also do side jobs. And there's a temptation to use equipment from the company or other materials for their own private work. And that's what we're trying to avoid. So the strongest answer here is unauthorized persons using purchase orders. That is, somebody using a company purchase order to purchase goods that are not for the company but for their own personal use, which is what I put up here. You're going to see oftentimes on the exam pre-numbered forms. And this question has to do with pre-numbered forms. The proper use of pre-numbered termination notice forms by the payroll department should provide assurance that, so why do we have these pre-numbered forms? Well, in a general way, what I put in blue here, <coughs> excuse me, is that we want numbered forms so that we can account for every one of them, firstly, and secondly, to avoid improper use of a document. So the biggest risk here, biggest financial risk, and some of these choices are you could justify, but I think one is the one that's the strongest is that we continue to pay an employee who's been terminated, which I have seen happen at companies just because the ball gets dropped, the procedures don't work or are not followed, and we end up paying somebody on the payroll when we really shouldn't be. So this, the best answer here is a terminated employee removed from the payload. That has the biggest dollar impact of all the choices that are listed here. And a pre-numbered form would ensure that all the termination notices are looked at and therefore people are properly taken off the payroll. The last question here, which of the following circumstances would most likely cause an auditor to suspect an employee fraud scheme? Now bear in mind, we'll the definition of fraud is willful intent to deceive and that fraud that is perpetrated or implemented by more than one person is going to override and avoid just about any control you can have in place. And also remember that an audit is not designed to detect fraud. 
So the strongest answer here is there are unexplained variances between the standard or our budgeted labor costs and our actual labor costs. So we look at the financials at the end of a quarter or a year and we say, gee whiz, our payroll was a lot higher. We planned a certain amount of expense. Why would it be higher? Given that we didn't approve hiring any more people or working more overtime, maybe there's a fraud scheme. Maybe there's a fraud scheme. That's as far as we're going to get on Audit CPA Exam 1. You can find a listing of all of our YouTube videos by type by emailing me. We'll send you the list. Additional videos not on the web, you can see our website here, stltest.net, for online tutoring one-on-one -on -one using gotomeeting.com. Here's my phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.